Yeah. You want to like them, but you can't. Are you listening? What? Are you listening? Did you bring me on this show to insult me? Yeah. Uh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh. Yeah. Hey, y'all don't want it with us, uh. man. You say gangsters over here. Straight gangsters. Uh. Uh. Happy Friday and welcome back. You are listening to Scout Team Radio. We bring it to you hot and live each and every weekday. Coming in right now at 6 a.m. on this beautiful Friday morning. I am one of your gracious hosts. They call me Loudbeard. You are the most egotistical, self-deluded person I have ever met. Yeah, that's kind of true. And the man on the other microphone... He is a great, great patriot and also a huge Orlando Magic fan. You know him as... America! America! Yeah, it's your boy Chris America coming to you live on this beautiful Friday morning. Whoa. Orlando Magic. Orlando Magic. Orlando Magic. Yeah. Loudbeard. Just let it sink I was too in. busy celebrating. I was too busy popping bottles of champagne and I totally forgot to hit the microphone button. But I put it on now and I am ready to go and celebrate this Orlando Magic win. I told you I was going to ride these waves, the lowest of lows and the highest of highs, and I am riding this high wave. We beat the Warriors, and we did it in a fashion that I wouldn't expect. One where we implode so bad that I'm back to... Oh, no! We suck again! Third quarter, man, was ugly. Ugly third quarter, but then we bounced back like I've never seen the Orlando Magic bounce back before 2012. This is a team possessed, man. This is a team of destiny. I don't know what else uh, other cliches I can come up with, but this team... Has finally gotten themselves positioned in the eighth seed in the East, and I'm excited about it. And I just want to say, I told you yesterday that the Warriors were going to come in, and they were a little emotionally distraught after that big loss where Dwayne Wade hits that buzzer beater. And the Orlando Magic, they capitalized in a way that was just beautiful. Yes, sir. And... I don't want to hear anything about how Kevin Durant wasn't playing because if Kevin Durant wasn't playing, there's still a bunch of all-stars on that team. That is still a 73-win team three or four years ago without Kevin Durant. So it works with the Toronto Raptors and Kawhi Leonard. does not work for the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, but Kevin Durant wasn't playing. That's what I said. I said I don't want to I hear know, excuses. I know, but you, you said you don't want to hear it, and I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. Whether you mm. want to hear it or not, mm. Kevin Durant wasn't playing. I'm putting you, you on saying. mute. You're muted. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't I hate, hear you. I hate when he mutes me. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Okay, unmuted. Are you done now? I'm done. Okay, All I right. can move on from that. Uh, you know, I woke up this morning thinking, wow, our job is going to be super easy today because there is so much that happened yesterday. Yesterday was a beautiful day. And the big news, Chris America, that you and I had been talking about for weeks, that we just couldn't wait till it finally happened. It finally came out yesterday. And you know what I'm talking about. Jason Witten finally comes out of retirement and is returning to the Dallas Cowboys. Wow. That is the news that we've been waiting for all offseason. People are wondering, when is he going to sign? What is he going to do? Nothing's going on in baseball. Nothing's going on in basketball. Like, nothing really. So we're just all waiting for Jason Witten. The world is watching. And he finally does it. He finally pulls the trigger. And can I say, I didn't think we could find anybody worse than John Gruden. And Monday Night Football is like, hold my beer. Yeah. Uh, do you think he was a little just ready to get out of the broadcast boost booth because everybody's like, ah, Tony Romo's amazing. Jason Witten, you suck. Well, if uh, you believe conspiracy theorists, the conspiracy theorist is that he was going to get fired and 
little Jonesy boy over there threw him a bone. Mm, I like conspiracy theories. Now we're getting into some interesting conversation. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, the pink slip was waiting on the door. Good old Jerry Jones. He, he calls up Jason Witt and he's like, you're coming back. You know why? We're going to save your manhood. We're going to save your dignity. They're not going to fire you. Screw them. You're a cowboy and you're a cowboy for life. Come back. Come back home, Jason Witten. And Jason Witten, he he just followed suit, right? Yes, he did. But the only thing keeping me from believing that is the Four Letter Network has a bunch of people who are trash that none of the fans like, and they keep those guys. So I'm partially not believing it just because of that. Hmm. But then you would have to sit there and say... All right, they just want to keep him because he's trash. Now, a lot of the guys that they have that are trash that they keep or have been there so long, they, they may have already forgotten how bad they were. We're Jason Witten's new blood. And with new blood, they just cut, fire these guys left and right. They don't care. They have no conscience with that. So I kind of feel like the conspiracy theory may be real, Chris America. The world may be coming down and ready to get rid of Jason Witten as a broadcaster, and now he's back to football. Well, I have been watching the Umbrella Academy Loudbeard, and I'm wondering how the world ends there. So I'm hoping mm. that it doesn't end like it does wanna, in that movie. Do you uh, you like what you're watching so far? How are you feeling about it? I'm two episodes in, and first episode I was like, eh, kind of slow, but all right, we're building up to something here. Second episode started off the same, but then started picking up, and I enjoy it. I think it's uh, so far it's got me hooked. Unfortunately, I started watching late last night, so when the second episode ended, I was like, oh, man, I really want to watch the next episode, but I have to get up early tomorrow morning and do a radio show, so, all right, I'll go to bed. Oh, I hate that. Those are, that show is one of the binge-worthy shows where they, they leave you on the cliffhanger after each episode, and it's on Netflix, so it's hard not to hit play to the next episode, you know? they It, it streams right into it. And I, I caught myself doing the same thing. I'd watch two or three episodes in a row, and I'm like, oh, I got I got to go to bed, or I got to be somewhere. And, but it's hard. It's hard to turn off. You'll enjoy it. I, I'm excited to hear how the adventure goes for you as we go along. And it was a recommendation I threw out a couple weeks you did. ago on our show. And, so and I'm glad I to hear to watch that it. you're – Yeah, good for you. Good had for you. Had the day off yesterday. Decided to watch the first episode. Then I had to go do a few errands. And then, like I said, late last night, watched the second episode, and I was hooked. I was like, okay, I'm in. I'm fully invested. Let's let's do this. Oh, Chris America, you you're making good decisions over there. I'm very proud of you. Your your decision making skills are, are top notch. Listening to Loudbeard's advice, good job. Yes, and so you said it was a busy day yesterday. I was kind of out of the sports world. When I'm off of work, I don't really listen to much radio. I I stick to Netflix when I'm watching TV. I kind of like to decompress from the sports world. I know that sounds like a like blasphemy for a sports radio show host or a sports fan to say, but sometimes I just need a break from sports. And during the months of February through, I would say, April, that those are good months that you're allowed to you know, decompress, get away for a little bit. Although I did watch the Magic game last night, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I started the, the movie or the show late is because I was up watching that Magic game. I think it ended around 9.30-ish, 9.40, so... Watched the Magic beat the Warriors. I was feeling pumped, and I was like, "All right, let me start episode number two of Umbrella Academy." Yeah, look at you. That good advice there. Um, especially after that Magic win, you had to just keep that momentum going with with greatness. Uh, so yeah, I said it was a big sports day yesterday, and there was just giant nuggets of of greatness that was popping out everywhere. Sadly, uh, though, no news out of baseball. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. It was weird. Nothing. So, um, Nothing important whatsoever. The biggest news out of football was measurements for this young Kyler Murray. Oh, yeah. You got to get those measurements in, man. That's you right. Big time. We got to measure Super them. Super Bowls are won and lost. They say it's a game of inches, and that's what they're talking about. They're talking about the combine and measurements. Yeah, they're talking about Kyler Murray's hair, hands, nine and a half inches. That okay. right there, that's a Solid. game of inches. Solid. Uh, and just as a side note, those are larger hands than Baker Mayfield and Mitchell Trubisky. What are you trying to say? That he's, that he's got big gloves? Uh, nine and a half inches around. Okay. So, uh, height, 
that was the big to do, right? How tall right. is this man? So if mm-hmm. he he measures in at five nine and seven eighths of an inch, he's too short for the NFL. Right. But nay, no, nay, no, Chris sir. America. What did no, he measure? No, no, no. He was wearing his high heels on the yes. time bond field. I would and have he ro- measured roller in skates. at a world whopping, record breaking five feet ten inch five feet five feet ten inches and one eighth of an inch. So yes, he is tall enough to be an NFL quarterback. Yes. Top five quarterback now. Hashtag Let's roll. It. He's in. All right. The whole whole NFL is going to draft this guy. He's going to number one now. That that you can't be a five nine quarterback. That doesn't work. But five ten. Five ten. We're all in. Mm. Game of inches, my man. Game, it is a game of, of inches. Game of inches. He is. You know, Russell Wilson's only five ten. Now mm-hmm. five ten and five eighths of an inch. So he's a half an inch taller. But as long as Kyler Murray's in that 5'10 range, he's going to be a superstar. Wow. Big news. Big news out of the NFL. That is huge news. I, I think whatever team is going to select Kyler Murray is going to win a Super Bowl now. They just are. I mean, those that one inch that we were wondering if he had came through, and now Kyler Murray, future Hall of Famer. It's inevitable. It is absolutely inevitable. You We don't... There's no way to stop this guy now. He's got the height. I mean, he obviously grew overnight because before we were thinking he was 5'7 or 5'8, but he's 5'10 and 1 eighth of an inch. I mean, this guy's basically Superman now. He's turned into a superhero overnight, and I'm glad he measured himself at the Combine. This, this worked out in the benefit for everybody. And I'm just saying it right now. You call him a future Hall of, Hall of Famer. I think he's going to win 15 and a half championships. Actually, 15 and one eighth championships in the NFL. Super Bowl wins right there. Well, I got some other celebrities who are 5'10 or 5'11-ish. Got around that range. Uh, Mandy Moore, 5'10. Look at what she's done with her career. Great actress, great singer. Taylor Swift, 5'11. And, of course, your favorite, Loudbeard, Tyra Banks, also 5'11. Oh, God, you had to bring her into this conversation. Uh, yes. Her and I have beef that go way back. I don't really want to rehash it this morning, Chris America. But um, you bring did up did we Mandy title Moore. that episode Tyra Banks, or was that think... make or was that make tennis great again? It was around one of our very few first episodes. I want to yeah, say it was like episode two or three. You got to go back. Go to scoutteamradio.com. Loudbeard has this epic rant about Tyra Banks to where we we and the other co-host who is no longer on the show, or he is, we don't know. We don't know what he's doing. There is a third co-host, I promise you guys, who are new to the show. Um, Once the search party re- reports back, we'll know where he's at. We thought we might have to like give Tyra Banks a little heads up, like, hey, you might have like this super fan who's going to come after you. It, no, no, it I'm got not awkward. a fan. I'm not a fan. Right. Well, Steve, n- don't, don't you dare put me in that category. Don't I mean, you dare. If you're going to call me an FSU fan, if you're going to call me an FSU fan. It is too early in the morning for you to insult me this way. This is not fair of you, Chris America. Ugh. I've had enough of it. Truce? Truce. Are we even now? You called me FSU fan, I called you Tyra Banks fan, we're good? No, no. It's not even close. Not even in the same hemisphere. Well, you should sleep it off then, Loudbeard. Uh, all right, all right. I will. All right, is that enough? Like, have you had enough talking about Tyra Banks? Can we move on from it, please? Let's move on. All right, thank you. All right, so speaking of... Outstanding quarterbacks, future Hall of Famers. It looks like Johnny Manziel. We talked about him quite yes. a bit yesterday. You yes. love him. You think he's very talented. He's underrated. I know Best you gave me your whole opinion uh, yesterday. But he's had discussions with the AAF, his people, and the Alliance. They're in talks. And it looks like the green light has been given for Johnny Manziel to start working out for teams of the Alliance. It's going to happen, Chris America. It is going to happen. I think this is honestly really good for the Alliance. I think it's going to be a crash and burn down the road. But he brings the circus. And what do people love? They love the circus in sports. People watch the circus. People go to the circus when it's in sports. As much as sports fans complain about the circus, we are drawn to it like moths to a flame. And whatever team ends up signing Johnny Manziel, they're going to get huge ratings. Now, the AAF has to hope that Johnny Manziel can look like Johnny Manziel of Texas A&M in their league because it's only going to be one, maybe two games. And if he's out there throwing interceptions, 
then they leave the circus. So hopefully he does well for the AAF's sake. But Loudbear, did you hear what his wife or girlfriend or whatever she's doing? Did you hear what she's up to? No, I did not. She's out here cheating on half marathon what? courses. Oh no, no. Say that yes, so it is uh, so. you and you and I we have um a pretty deep relationship with the running community here in Central Florida. Yes, and we do. We know that this is not good. This is no bueno, right? No, no. So Miss America, avid runner, Mrs. Loudbeard, a big time runner herself. Like you said, that's how we met, is that our two ladies knew each other through running and then we hung out. The, those two hung out and you know the wives, they, the ladies, they like to bring their men along from time to time, and we hit it off, and uh, the rest is scout team history. But yeah, so she was on this course, and I guess she came over the mat at the 6.4 mile mark. So anybody who's never run a race, you get a bib, and that bib has a chip in it, and they have checkpoints throughout the race that you have to cross, and it tells you what your time is when you cross that mat. This particular race had a six and a half. A mile checkpoint and 11 mile checkpoint. She came in through the six and a half mile checkpoint, Loudbeard, at like an hour and 20 minutes or something like that, which is right. respectable, around like yeah, a 13, a, 14 minute pace. Yeah, that's that's normal. That's that's fair. And then uh, she finished the race at one hour and 58 minutes. Wow, that like that second half is like super. <laughs> She's speed, booking man. it. So wow, the Flash. She She's got superhero yeah. powers. <laughs> She didn't check in at the uh, at the 11 mile mark. There is no time going across the mat at the 11 mile mark. So they're figuring she shaved off about six ish miles, or like maybe maybe five miles somewhere around there, and then she finished off the last two with that same 14 minute pace to finish at a hour and 58 minutes. So she was either just you know hanging back at a 14 minute pace and then picked it up to like a or a 14 minute pace and picked it up to a 4 minute pace or she cut the course. Um I'm going to go with the latter on this one. Uh there's no physical way that this would have happened. So just like Johnny Manziel, she's a little bit of a I don't know, a cutting edge polarizing not Birds given of a feather, a, man. Yeah, birds of a feather. Well, so not, she not defended, rule followers, huh? So she defended herself, and my whole thing is, okay, so then just post your Garmin or your Apple Watch, whatever you use. There's no way a wealthy person doesn't use some form of run GPS app. There's just, I don't, I, like 99% of runners have some form of tracking their runs, and there's no way I don't believe that Mrs. Manziel doesn't have such thing and doesn't use it. So just post your... Post your little GPS and show us where you ran. That's all you got to do. Yeah, like when people don't believe me, when I ran a 151 back in December, all I have to do is like, here's my Garmin. This is what I wore. Here's my map. You can see I ran the 13.1 miles. Hmm. Yeah, that's not going to happen because we know the truth here. And yeah. She's not going to show it. She'll defend herself, say, yeah, no, I'm just a fast runner. But no, we all know the truth there. Well, Chris America... We're talking about people getting in trouble, and I'm going to segue over to another man that is in trouble, but he does not think he's guilty. That's right. Your man, Robert Kraft, after all of these terrible allegations of prostitution, he comes out and he pleads not guilty. Do you think this is the right way for him to play this? No. N not when there's video evidence. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, it seems pretty substantial. Uh... It seems like a rock-solid case that they have going on here. I mean, I know he's got billions of dollars, and he's probably thinking he can pull the old O.J. Simpson where he gets the best legal counsel possible. But I don't know if any money in the world could get you off of this one. Yeah, and so when the story first broke, too, it came out that this is a big-time human trafficking, espionage international like we thought Liam Neeson could be busting through the door at any moment looking for his daughter and uh, it really turned out to be just a normal run-of-the-mill prostitution ring that there there was only one charge officially so far of human trafficking and that was uh, another prostitute I don't I didn't really read the whole details of that but there is no like big-time human trafficking ring like they made it out to be when the story first broke or you would see more human trafficking charges than just the one. 
And um, so it's kind of muddy waters. I read a report out of Sports Illustrated earlier this week and didn't want to really bring it up because it's kind of an old story. But so if, if it turns out to not be this big time human trafficking ring and just a run of the mill, like RNT type place, then Robert Kraft should just roll with it. Just roll into the skid and say, yeah, I made a mistake. I was stressed out with the Kansas City Chiefs game coming up and I needed to relieve some pressure. And so that's what I did. Yeah, I mean, he could, at the very least, not say that he's guilty. Like, just do the old no contest. I'm willing right. to to take... I'm, take I'm willing to whatever yeah, punishment. Take I mean, lumps. it's a misdemeanor be, crime. Be easy. Yeah, go he, easy on me. He's not going to serve time, all right? Not for a misdemeanor. He's not going to... He's going to get a fine that he can easily afford and maybe some community service, which he should already be doing as an NFL owner. Yeah, I mean, you're right. It's a misdemeanor. Like, if he was graffitiing the side of the Asian massage par- parlor, he would have be getting the same misdemeanor charge for that. So it's not like this is going to be something where he's going to be thrown in the the slammer and everybody's going to think that he's going to be in jail for 10 months or whatever. No, this guy's getting off. It, it's not, it's not going like, to like, be that on. big of a crime. When we're talking about the story, you've got to be more clear as to what do you mean by this guy's getting off. Oh, boy. The old R&T coming back to haunt me, huh? <laughs> All right, so Robert Kraft, not guilty. All right, well, well let's see how this, and this the other thing the this does Simpson is Simpson trial. This thing that this does is it prolongs the case, and it prolongs the storyline. If he just says no contest, he gets his fine. We move on in like five minutes. We're done with the story. As much as people would like to bring stuff up back again, we as a society, there's going to be another story coming up. Like... We were all Robert crafting out, and then this whole uh, political thing came up this week with that testimony, and we shifted gears to that, and we were full-on focused, and we forgot about Robert Kraft, to be honest with you. I think the majority of America forgot about Robert Kraft two days ago. Yeah, the, the story had already died. It was time to move on. He, this should have been just played out and gone, and again, I say he should have done no contest, take his lumps, move on, the story would disappear. Now you're right. It's going to prolong, and we're going to keep talking about it because there's going to be updates that continually come out, and his name's going to be dragged through the mud every time an update comes out. You know the district attorney's going to come at him hard for making them work. Like, okay, <laughs> yeah. Robert, you're making me work now? Like, I need to go focus on these other guys, and you want me to focus on you? Okay, well, then we'll bring up all this other stuff. We'll gather up more evidence. We'll find out how many times you've been here, and we'll roll with that. So we'll, oh, we'll see how this turns out. Uh, we got out. some hot takes on Twitter, Chris Merrick. I hate to interrupt uh, let's you, hear but Go ahead. Uh, number one, if <laughs> this one's the best, uh, M- Memphis Spence is tweeting at us. He says, if Miss America can get off, why can't Kraft wait? Dot, dot, dot. Hmm. Uh, Mike Berlan from Kraft Root Sports at Scout Team Radio. Runners do use Garmin's, but she's not a runner. She doesn't have anything to show. Yeah, she's not a runner. She's... Basically, just some average person that cheats, and Johnny Manziel <laughs> no. is perfect for her. Trust me, everybody who comes into that, like, I, I don't think she has a Garmin, but she has an Apple Watch, or and she Fitbit. has like, uh, you you know who the the non runners are? They even have those big old uh, sleeves for their phone that they wear on their arm, and they there's apps for that. There's apps for, and <laughs> nobody runs a race. I I don't know anybody who runs a race blind anymore these days. It's a good point. That's a very good point. Yeah, um, except Johnny Manziel's girlfriend, who is a cheater. Just saying it. Just saying it. Well, if she wants to get off from this cheating thing, she can go see Robert Kraft. Maybe she can go to that mm. orchid place. Mm, I don't know. I don't know, Chris America. Well, moving on, I think we've talked enough about Robert Kraft and his infidelities. Uh, I do want to talk about a, another big-time name in the sports world, a guy that I'm not really a huge fan of, but he said something very smart, and I wanted to get your take on this. So Kobe Bryant, Laker legend, not top five, has advice for Zion Williamson. He comes out and he says, if he's healthy, he should go play. And I love it when these old players come out and say, don't sit, don't try to wait, you're a player, go out and play. Do you think this is good advice Kobe Bryant is given to Zion Williamson? Any to any advice that you can get from Kobe Bryant, I think you got to kind of weigh it, right? 
because he is one of the greatest of all time. And I think when it comes to playing basketball, yeah, I take I take Kobe's brand advice. Life advice sometimes, eh, not so much. Like I'm not gonna take relationship advice from Kobe Bryant. Maybe or Robert maybe some, Kraft for that matter. Yeah, uh, but but yeah, basketball advice. I'll, I'll take his advice on that. All right, good. Um, I'm just I'm looking down my list here, and I'm just trying to think of the big stories that well, happened I got yesterday. A big, I got a big baseball story, Loudbeard. Do you? All right, let's hear it. I, I guess something happened in baseball. If you've got a big baseball story, what what happened? Well, Chris Archer, uh, Rays pitcher extraordinaire, Rays legend, is now sadly on the Pittsburgh Pirates. And he had this to say about the St. Pete, Tampa Bay area of fans. I could definitely see them moving. I mean, the fact of the matter is you have to have the fans to come support the team. And we, there are great fans in St. Pete. I just don't think, I don't think the... I don't think there's enough people to support a team. And St. Pete's beautiful. It's nice. It's RC. There's great food. There's great people. There's great coffee. Um, but the it's not dense enough for a major league ball club. And the only reason I say that is because there's been a team for 20 years. In the last 10, they've been bottom third in, in attendance. So the numbers speak for themselves. I could. De- whoa, whoa, whoa! Wow. That's a bunch of honky, man. This guy, he doesn't get it. The coffee in Tampa and St. Pete sucks. It really does. I don't know, I mean, but I don't even know what he's trying to say there. But he's right about the attendance, and he's right about the team. That now, area just struggles to keep it up. You're just bringing up Robert Kraft. Any chance you get, aren't you? Um, yeah, I am. I honestly, I I blame the Rays a little bit on this because when the Rays are good, they sell out. They don't have a density, population density problem. It's just they don't spend the money to get the players to make the fans want to come out and see. Now, with baseball, baseball is the hardest sport to cheer for a bad team. It is really hard to motivate fans to come out in June, July, and August when you are like 20 games below 500. Uh, Yeah, I mean... In any sport, it's hard when you have a losing team. Even in football, you see when they have great attendance, a team week 15 that's out of the playoff race, the attendance is like cut in half. So in baseball, it's even more difficult because, you know, it's such a long season. And once they're out of it, it does. You're, you're, as a fan, you have, you have trouble getting out there. And, I mean, the Rays themselves, they've had some good seasons over the past 10 years. But it's still that, that city just doesn't doesn't show out now if you think moving from the st pete area back into tampa do you think that would be enough of a move to help maybe increase um seat seats and sales and all that or an increase attendance or do you think that it just needs to move out of the tampa st pete area altogether Mm, that's tough to say if they do move in the area they need to move to far east tampa they need to come out past ebor city on i-4 so that way it makes it more it makes it a lot easier for us here in Orlando to go out there and go to those games cuz that's the biggest deterrent for me man. It's like a two and a half hour drive sometimes, especially if the game's at 7 on a Tuesday. Yeah, I can't go, guys. Sorry. I got to go through downtown Orlando traffic. Then you're going to make me go through sometimes Lakeland gets a little bit of traffic in there though it's not that bad. And then you're going to make me well First, I got to drive through Disney, too. Disney traffic can be horrid. And then you're going to make me go through downtown Orlando traffic and downtown St. Pete. That's just too much driving, man. That, that can turn into a three-hour drive real quick to make it to a seven hour game or a 7 o'clock game, which means I basically got to take off work just to go see the race play on a weekday. Uh, you're right, but guess what? We have breaking news coming oh, in on the Twitter wire. Yes, from David Big- Green. Big baseball story from oh, David Gordon, Green on Twitter at Mean Green underscore forty two. Gordon Ramsay's up. Gordon Ramsay's gonna lose his mind over the story. Go ahead, Loudbeard. Brandon Nemo of the Mets missed a game in spring training because he ate undercooked chicken. Wow, baseball has a huge storyline going on right now. Undercooked chicken, salmonella rampant all over the league. Man, like I said, Gordon Ramsay would lose his mind. If there's one thing that makes him just go all out crazy on Hell's Kitchen, it is when he has raw chicken on a plate. He's always like, you're going to kill somebody. 
<laughs> so I'm Get just glad. Idiot sandwich. I'm just glad Brandon Nemo's not dead. Uh, the jury's still out on that one. It could still happen. You never know. Yes. Well, Loudbeard, looks like it's time for a commercial break. Uh, maybe we can find another big time baseball story on the other side. And we're going to do an NBA draft. The, uh, the four letter network. Sorry, that was a little premature. Yeah, sorry, I, I stuttered. I, I lost my train of thought. The four letter network uh, put out a top this. 10 list of the top or of the NBA players under 25. We're going to draft said players. When I'm working hard, I build up a thirst for sports. That's when I grab a cold 12-ounce sports radio. (sighs) 12-ounce sports radio. Quench your sports thirst. Scout team listeners and friends of the show, I've got something special for you. It looks like 12-ounce sports radio has done it again. We have partnered with Rally House. You just go to the website, 12ozsportsradio.com. Click on the banner on the right side of the page, and it will take you directly to Rally House. Rally House has some of the greatest, most unique sports items for that diehard fan, casual fan, and anybody and everybody out there that is special in your life. So go ahead and check it out. Once again, go to that website, 12ozsportsradio.com. Click on the banner to the right of the page, and you will get taken to the best sports merchandise website on all of the interweb. Ring Central features all in one phone, messaging, and video conferencing. It's easy to use with unparalleled security. Ring Central simplifies things so you can grow. Call Ring Central to speak with a representative about a price for your growing business at 877 779 3860. Again, that's 877 779 3860. Hey everybody, it's your favorite patriot, Chris America, and I want you to listen every single weekday, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and on replays from 11 a.m. to noon of Scout Team Sports. Listen, George Washington did not cross over the ocean blue in 1492 to defeat the Nazis, so you can listen to the same tired national clickbait sports stories. So once again, tune in to us every single morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and then we replay From 11 to noon. I will see you there. And God bless America. Yeah, welcome back. We want to thank all those listeners out there for listening in. Once again, we're Scout Team Radio. He's Chris America. I'm Loudbeard. We bring it to you hot each and every morning. We roll at 6 a.m. on 12 Ounce Sports Radio live. We also record the show and drop it as a podcast, and we send it over to our podcast network, our partner, Barn Burner. They, they throw our episode out at the Barn Burner Network, and we appreciate that. We also have our own podcast, which is available at ScoutTeamRadio.com. You can hit it up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, anywhere you can find a podcast. We also like to get social. If you've been listening in, if you're a first-time listener, check us out on social media. We like to get social on Twitter. The Twitter line has been hot today. We've had Memphis Pence, Mike Berlon, David Green, a lot of good time, good listeners, friends of the show hitting us up. If you're out there listening for the first time, catch us on Twitter. Tweet at us. We'll take your tweets. We'll read them on the air, and we'll get interactive at Scout Team Radio on Twitter. We're also on Instagram and Facebook at Scout Team Radio. Make sure you check all of those out. But before we get going into the second half of our show where we have a fantastic Friday draft, each Friday we do a great draft. Chris America, I have big news that I want to share with you. Did you find some big news? I found some big news. There is, is it a- huge. 
It is huge, Chris America. There is a former captain of a professional sports team that has left his team. No, oh, no. And I just want to talk about this. It's in the so NHL, in the NHL, the Islanders face the Leafs. Stay. And former captain John Tavares <laughs> visits his home, his old team, once again as the Islanders dominate the Leafs. Is that the story that you thought I was going to be bringing up? Yes, it's the exact same story I was going to bring up after the break. I was like, man, we don't talk enough about hockey. Let's let's bring this one up. Yeah, you beat I mean, me to it once again. Big news. I mean, big time talent. John Tavares. He left uh, his city that loved him, and he after he comes back and visits, he gets booed, and and just fans don't like it. So, I mean, big time talent leaving a big city. That doesn't happen every day, does it? No, it doesn't really happen that often, but um, I'm glad that it did. All right. So, Well, I do have one bit of news that I want to get, and we can't leave it out because I know it's just kind of like bottom of the pile, like the scraps of news, but we bring all of the sports news here at Scout Team Radio, and I'm going to bring up one bottom of the pile, just, just some scraps. You know, a lot of fans... Don't want to hear about these small time signings and these like tiny little contracts, but we need to bring it up to them. Yeah, yeah, are make, you ready? Make it quick though, because you yeah, because we got the draft. Yeah, yes. we don't so, have a lot of time for this. But go, go so, ahead. So, uh, unknown player, never even heard of him. I want to say it's like Brycey Har <laughs> Harper. Brycey Har Harper. Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. I, it's I, a weird name. I've never heard never of this heard guy of before. Him. Never heard of him. Signed to a measly thirteen years, three hundred and thirty million dollars contract i mean 25 million dollars a year that is small potatoes in uh today's Pocket mlb change. so Pocket i don't change. i don't know i don't know if it was worth bringing up loud beard or not but um i figured we would bring it up just you know like i said scraps bottom of the pile news story yeah i wish brycey the best um i think he's gonna do really well he, he signed with the phillies right that's i think he's going to the phillies now uh, good, good choice for him because Philadelphia fans are the best. They're always very positive and upbeat. Really great city to go to, brotherly love and all that. So, Brycey, we wish you the best. Now, were you surprised? What what surprised you most about this contract? Uh, the fact that the per year amount was less than Manny Machado. That was the biggest surprise yeah. to me. Um, I thought he was going to get 10 years plus. That I was good with that. I'm surprised with the 13 years. Maybe that's what the sticking point was. He wanted 13, and most teams were willing to go no more than 10. So 13 was surprising, but the overall total amount, which was more than Giancarlo Stanton, it's a very good number. But when you look at the per-year amount, Manny Machado got more money per year than Bryce Harper, and that, to me, was the biggest surprise. So that part was the second biggest surprise to me. The biggest surprise for me was the rumored other offers that he had on the table in the finals. And it was more like four to six year type offers for a ton of money. And I was kind of surprised to see that those were the other offers. Like I thought it was going to be like 10 years, 330 million or and then the next offer is going to be like, well, eight years, you know, 300 and Two million. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up now. But where the the longevity wasn't as long, but the money was a little bit higher, and there were a lot of like NBA type offers on the table as far as longevity goes. That to me was the most surprising. That that that's where they were trying to get him to do. And then it was the Phillies who said, No, no, no. We'll take you for the next decade and a third. It's all about the long game. Chicks dig the long ball. Chicks dig the long ball. So Loudbeard. We will be 48 by the time this contract expires. Well, you know, the, the funny um, joke running on the internet that got completely played out yesterday was the old uh, Bobby Bonilla is still going to be getting paid after Bryce Harper. That is that true, unless Bryce Bobby Harper Bonilla sets contract. up a Bobby Bonilla-type buyout. Yeah, he should. He should. All right, Chris America, well, we, we got to get going on this draft because we're going to run out of time if we don't. So as you mentioned, we're looking at the top young NBA players, and we're going to put together our own teams in this fantastic draft. And I can't remember. Do you go first or do I go first this week? Uh, I'm trying to remember. What was our draft last week? 
Oh man, I have a terrible memory. You're really I don't even think we're all of my weaknesses on the radio right now. I'm really feeling vulnerable right now, Chris America. Real vulnerable. Real vulnerable. Uh, let's see. I, I you can go first. Uh, are you sure? No, I'm, I want you to go first. I feel like last week I did. I did. So yeah, okay. go ahead. You you can go first. I, th- th- there's an obvious slam dunk number one. There seems like there always is. So I'll let you have. Yeah. That. Well, okay. I'll take the obvious slam dunk number one. You are sure about this? I feel like you got a little trick up your sleeve. I I really don't. Um. And I, I'll say, I, I, I honestly, if I, I was going number one, too. it would, it would be Giannis. I mean, yep, that's who that I'm would going be, with. That's the slam Giannis dunk. But Anta Toko, it, if you don't Kupo. say his last name right, you don't get to draft him. <laughs> Giannis Anta Tokubo. All right, that's a good choice. Uh, obviously, the best number one player for guys under twenty five. Um, so for me. I'm going to have to to really dig deep because after you get Giannis, that's going to be like the one guy that everybody's like, yeah, Giannis. Great, Giannis. Tr- great, great list, Chris America, because of one dude. Because of but one so dude. So I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go solid all the way through. Uh, to me, Joel Embiid is is that number two guy on this list. So I'm going to go Joel Embiid with my number one pick here in this NBA draft. Mm, that's a solid choice. Solid choice. Hmm. 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 Which is the dude on uh, the Dallas Mavericks? Luka Doncic or yeah. Nikola Jokic? No, Jokic is uh, the Nuggets, or Jokic. Uh, Luka Doncic is on the Mavs. Mm, it's tough. It's tough. I'm looking at those two guys, and then I'm looking over at Ben Simmons. And Ben Simmons is really, really good, but people are really low on him because the further he gets away from the basket, the less efficient of a basketball player he is. And in today's NBA... People dig the long ball. They do. They dig it. All right. I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to pull the trigger on Ben Simmons. Wow. That was unexpected. All right. that That's good. You're leaving some good quality players on the, the table for me. <laughs> well, no matter uh, what I did with the second pick, there's still going to be a ton of good quality <laughs> players. All right. I'm just trying to create some sort of... Uh, a dialogue around this draft. I gotta create some drama. Give me a break. Jeez, busting my balls early here. You're like Robert Kraft. Um, Nikola Jokic from the Denver Nuggets to me is just a phenomenal talent. He's not well known, so this may not go over as well on this draft when we post it out on Twitter. But he to me is a slam dunk. He's gonna be my number two draft pick in my right. draft. You ready for some controversy? Yes, go for it. We're picking basketball players under the age of 25, correct? Correct. It includes college players. I think I know where you're going. Yes. I'm, I got to do it. I got to go Mr. Exploding Shoe himself, Zion Williamson, with my third pick. I, I didn't know how long I could leave him out there. I felt like I felt like you might sweep him up with the second pick. And then I thought, uh, an old, old Loudbeard. He's a little swiper, no swiping type guy over there. He's the swiper of... Door of the Explorer. So, swipe or no swiping, I'm I'm swiping up Zion Williamson with my third pick. Yeah, he probably would have been not available if you waited one more round. I would just let you know that. But I got to go the other guy, Luka Doncic, or Doncic. He's he's my guy over there with the Mavs. He's my number third pick. Pretty easy pick there for me. I feel good about it. Yeah, I kind of... I've wanted... Obviously, I, I mentioned I wanted those two guys, but I went with the more athletic high ceiling type guys and you went with the more efficient safer picks i feel like is that a good assessment there loudbeard of those and, uh, between I'm ben team- simmons mm. between ben simmons and zion williamson i feel like that's the high ceiling guys that have a lot of potential and haven't quite gotten there yet where luka Doncic and nico Jokic are uh team safe basketball players like you can't go wrong picking those guys yeah uh like they I have guess. a high floor. Now I think these guys have a high ceiling. You're just I, I don't know what you're going for there, but Ben Simmons you, to me you is think... the one questionable one. Zion is great. You pick Zion. I'm I'm a little jealous. I think I should have got him. He's going to be great for the draft. Giannis is the clear cut number one. But I think Simmons. You mentioned it. The further he gets away from the basket, right. To me, that's always going to be his Achilles' heel until he learns to be a better shooter. He's going to be more known as that facilitating guard, even though he's got a lot of height. I, that, to me, is the, the challenge there. My international guys, to me, it seems like they've got a long 
a lot of growing still to do because they are still young, which I guess everybody on this list is young, but um, they're, they're, their ceiling's very high. I mean, Donkic could be top five guy in the league in the next three to four years. I mean, easily. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Hmm. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty here, Loudbeard. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Very, I've, very nitty gritty. I've got and my I'm, eye on one guy, and I, I'm just, you, you always steal my drafts picks, so I'm hoping you don't pick them. I'm not saying who it is, but got my eye on somebody. Can you tell me what his name starts with? Uh, Z. <sighs> Zion Williamson, already taken. X. Oh, Loudbeard, because now I don't know how people are going to vote. Are they going to look at this and be like, what? You're all guards? Like, this isn't a basketball team. I don't know how they're going to interpret what we're doing here. Hopefully they just see we're just picking the top 10 guys under 25. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Hmm. I wish you were talking a little bit more because I'm still not decided. I, I, I have a hard time here because a lot of these guys, like I know them, but I don't know them, know them. Uh, okay. Uh, what do you want me to talk about? So, yeah, that Robert Kraft story, that was re interesting. Um, Brycey Harper, uh, yeah, I heard he's a good baseball player. Uh, well, I'm also um, trying to figure out, you know what? Screw it. I'm going Jason Tatum. Okay, there you go. Good. I would not have picked him. After how bad the uh, Celtics have been playing this year? After last year, I would have had him probably top two, top three. At this year, hmm, he took a step back for me. So number four, I'm going big cat. Carl Anthony Towns. He is my number four pick. See, look, I was ready. You didn't pick my guy. I'm good. Thank you, Chris. You're America. good to go. Now, now I got to go back to my fifth pick, right? Yep, you got to go back to your fifth pick. Well, what do you like the most about Carl Anthony Towns? Um, I don't know the name. The fact that he's got a cool name like Big Cat. Uh, he's young. He's big. He's talented. He's gonna be the face of the Minnesota Timberwolves for a very long time. I like all of those things. A little disappointed in his performance last year in the playoffs, but he's off to a great start this year. Just great young talent. I, I, I hear you typing on the keyboard. Typing away. I'm, I'm, I'm looking Googling. up stats. I'm trying to <laughs> trying to find some good stats. I don't, I don't want people to be like, you took that guy. <laughs> oh, Chris America. Oh, you know what? Man. I'm going to do it. Do it. I'm going to go, I feel like I just have too many guards. Like, you have the big guy. I mean, I do have Zion Williamson's a big guy. Giannis is a big guy. Um, I guess you don't need, this is a small ball league, so I guess I can have a lot of guards, right? Yes. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go full on De'Aaron Fox. Oh, good choice, good choice. Yeah, I'm going to go De'Aaron Fox because I like the fact that he's he was in that draft. He was the fifth selected Nobody Sacramento didn't even really want him. Um, he ended up on New Orleans, correct? No, he's in Sacramento. Oh, he's still in Sacramento. Why did I just see that he was in New Orleans? We got traded to New Orleans. I must have been looking at something else. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> um, De'Aaron Fox. I'm going to take him because he came out of that draft with Lonzo Ball and um, Markel Fultz. And I feel like he's been the better point guard out of the two or out of the three. Yep. All right, Chris America, um, I, with my last pick, I, I could have gone in many different directions. We usually do our honorable mentions, but as I'm playing this through in my head, I'm thinking Devin Booker, quality young player, Chris Stapps Porzingis, other than the injuries, he could be a superstar in this league. But nay, I say nay to those guys. I'm going with the real rookie of the year last year, the true rookie of the year and that would be my man donovan mitchell with my fifth pick in this nba youngster draft uh, i should have went with him but <laughs> i got some hope Coulda, woulda, mike, mike berlon from craft brood sports they were on last night from 8 30 to 10 so if you missed it look him up on apple podcast craft brood sports he says that zion pick might have just wrapped this up for chris scout team i agree yeah, the Zion one hurts me. That it hurts me a little bit. I, I, I went with uh, Jokic because I know that he's a better player now. He's an All Star now. He's, and he's proven in the NBA. Proven in the NBA, and Zion isn't. But it's namesake, right? Like when we put this right. vote out there, Zion. Everybody's like goo goo and Gaga over Zion. I mean, cuckoo for cocoa puffs for this dude. So right because they're of all that, lady, that they're may, all Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper over this pick. They are. They, and Giannis, obviously, your number one pick is is. 
head and shoulders above anybody I could have picked because he is MVP guy in the N- NBA. I, uh, I, I think I have a good team, but when the vote comes out, I'm a little nervous because Chris America, you, you some solid picks there, my friend. Solid. Thank you, sir. But uh, some team is not playing solid recently, and it's not the, the Boston Celtics. It's another team out west that's starting to fall apart a little bit. Loudbeard, you'd mentioned yesterday that they could beat, if the everything fell right, they could beat the Warriors in seven, but I'm not sure what their losing streak is. I know it's at least two in a row. i got to see if it's extended further than that, but Oklahoma City Thunder take a fall at home to the 76ers, 108-104. to Are they on Celtics mode? Should they hit that panic button? I don't know, man. I, I feel like a lot of these big teams right now are, are hitting that lull where they know they're going to be in the playoffs, they haven't turned on their playoff intensity, as as LeBron has said, because you mentioned the Oklahoma City Thunder beating the Warriors. Well, the Warriors have lost four out of their last six. I mean, does that sound like a championship caliber run to you? Absolutely not. And so Oklahoma City's going through that same, that, that kind of late season slump. That doesn't mean anything to me. I, I know that Oklahoma City and Golden State are both going to bounce back and really play tough in the playoffs. So I'm not nervous about it. I'm not worried. Not worried one bit, Chris America. Yeah, Oklahoma City on a three-game losing streak. Warriors on a two-game losing streak. But uh, two teams that are not in that slump right now. One is the uh, Portland Trailblazers. They've been yeah, on fire hot. since since they got Enos Cantor. They've been red hot. Right, and it's like they're terrorizing the league. <laughs> that they are. <laughs> and the uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, they come out swinging. Nine nine wins in their last ten on a six game win streak. They're they're red hot right now. Yeah, it's that Giannis man. That's that Giannis. He'll do that for you. Uh, Bucks have a lot of depth too. I, I we talked about this in the past, but it's a quality team, man. They've got a lot of depth. Chris Middleton, uh, Brooke Lopez, a guy that you know these are like underrated guys that you don't really think that much about, but. Honestly, it's a quality s- squad, but they just don't have that playoff experience. So in- when it comes playoff time, a team that's slumping now, like the Golden State Warriors and the Oklahoma City Thunder, I think will bounce into it and get get ready. Where a team like the Bucks, they may struggle in the playoffs because of that lack of experience. So I just, I don't know. What you see now may not translate into what you're going to see in the playoffs, Chris America. So I say proceed with caution. Do you know who the last team was to beat the uh, the Bucks? Was it the Orlando Magic? Yes, it was the Orlando Magic, Loudbeard. Man, you are more in love with that song than Robert Kraft with Asian massage parlors. What is there not to love? What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Ah, uh, Night at the Roxbury, underrated movie, just saying. Well, we're about two minutes down. PG wasn't playing. Don't start. David Green at Scout Team. He He's not feeling us talking about that, that Thunder lost. Ooh, wait a second, wait a second. Memphis Spence is throwing his list out here for the young youngsters, but I'm with you, David Green. PG wasn't playing. Oklahoma City is fine. Chris America just likes to throw shade on anybody else. He just likes his Orlando Magic, but I like the Oklahoma City Thunder, too. Good point. Yes, but they are on a three-game losing streak. Okay, so Scout Team Radio, Memphis Spence List beats us both. Uh, Dennis Smith Jr., Porzingis, Joel Embiid, Brandon Ingram, Anthony Davis. Now, I'd have to look at Davis's age. I think Davis is 26, so I think he was out of our qualifiers. Otherwise, Hold either on. both of us would have put him he, in there. First of all, first of all, he, he doesn't get to have this list because he wasn't part of the draft. <laughs> so, like, he's taking your Call guy. Him out. Like, Call him like out. How, it's easy, I can make a top five list easily when there's <laughs> not a draft there. Like, I don't know. Uh, and he's we gonna, should bring him on one time. We, we should have a let guest him draft picker. Let, let him draft. Um, I think we could do Anthony that. Davis is under 25. How did he not make that ESPN list then? No, I don't think he is. That's what I'm saying. I think he's 26. Is he? You could fact check it for me. I mean, I was fact I checking put right Harper, now. I almost put Bryce Harper on my list. Bryce Harper. I think he would have been. He would have been perfect. I mean, uh, that would have. That's how yeah, I get the votes. He he turns 26 on March 11th, so he technically is still on this list. Oh, so I did we, not know that. If I would have known that, I would have picked him. 
Yeah, I thought he was. I thought he was older. Uh, that's my bad. Uh, and, you know what, Memphis Spence? You're right. Good choice there. Uh, I'm gonna redraft. I'm gonna go ahead and put Anthony Davis on mine. So I'm gonna be. I'm gonna have. Uh, a nice I'm gonna make here. him my my number three pick. Uh, when I tweet it, that's what I'll do. So that way, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Well, Chris America, I can't believe it. This show flew by. All those big nuggets in the baseball world, the undercooked chicken and all that stuff. I mean, this was a great, great show. It was a fantastic show, Loudbeard. And uh, now we're going on to the weekend where we have some AAF football to watch, some spring training if you're into that kind of thing, and uh, some more NBA basketball and hockey. It's going to be a great weekend, and the Apollos will advance to 4-0. and You better take aim. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to do it, buddy. It's in the cold weather. I don't even know if it might snow. No, don't say that. We're not a cold weather town. Yep. Well, to you, see you guys next week. Uh, if you get bored over the weekend, go to Apple Podcasts, subscribe to Scout Team Radio, and listen to all our older episodes.